Tonight's episode of America's Hometown Horror is brought to you by our friends at Fangoria Magazine. That's right, the first name in fright since 1979 is now an affiliate of America's Hometown Horror. And because of that, we can now offer you an exclusive 20% discount on any first-time magazine subscription or merchandise purchase by heading over to shop.fangoria.com and using the code HOMETOWNHORRORPOD at checkout. That's shop.fangoria.com slash HOMETOWNHORRORPOD or just use the code HOMETOWNHORRORPOD at checkout for that exclusive discount on anything from Fangoria. Tonight's episode of America's Hometown Horror is also brought to you by our friends at Horror Fact magazine never heard of horror facts magazine well if you're a horror fan they're a name that you absolutely should know you can find them over at horrorfacts.com and they're a great resource for all things horror including news reviews editorials and lots of other horror podcasts not only limited to but including america's hometown horror so head on over to horrorfacts.com and check them out last but certainly not least if you want to support america's hometown horror directly i would highly recommend you get yourself some tickets to the hometown haunts and hops horror convention which will be taking place at mayflower brewing company in lovely plymouth massachusetts for the first time on october 20th of this year. Yes, that's right, folks. The Saturday before Halloween, we're partnering with our friends over at Inebriart to put this event on, and you can buy yourself some tickets by going to inebriart.com, go to their events page, pull up their October calendar, and get yourself some $5 tickets to the Hometown Haunts and Hops Horror Convention, which is now sponsored by HalloweenNewEngland.com. HalloweenNewEngland.com is the website for the truly Halloween-obsessed, with the most extensive guides to New England haunted houses, ghost tours, classic horror film screenings, jack-o'-lantern festivals, haunted hayrides, and more. They've got all the thrills covered throughout September and October. With over 2,500 Halloween events on their events calendar, and hundreds of local Halloween attractions. It's the only place you'll find everything from haunted history tours and costume contests to witch haunts are open on a Thursday night. No matter what you're looking for this Halloween season, HalloweenNewEngland.com has you covered and we are thrilled to be partnering with them. Now, let's get on with the show. Good evening and welcome into another episode of America's Hometown Horror. Thanks so much for checking back in with us. And I say to you listeners, happy spooky season. It is uh, September now. Spooky season is upon us. It is September. I don't care what you say. Yep, it is you September. Remember. 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 More on that in a little bit. But uh, a couple quick things here before we get going. And I introduce my co-host. Here's where you can find us online. First place, first and foremost is our website, which you can find at ahpod.com. It's A-H-H-P-O-D.com. You can also find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just search for America's Hometown Horror, and you will find us. And you can also drop us a line, if you so wish, at hometownhorrorpodcast at gmail.com. But the most important place to give us feedback is by leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. If you'd be so kind, we'd prefer a five-star review uh, that helps us grow as a show and get out there to more listeners, especially with spooky season here and upon us the more people we can get listening to us ramble on for uh you know an hour each and every week would be good stuff for us finally i'm sure you've noticed the difference in our sound quality over the last month or so probably a little bit longer at this point because we certainly have and that's all courtesy of our buddy shano over at sky wheel media who's now doing all of our audio and music production so thanks to shano for making us sound great and if you have a podcast that you're looking to take to the next level Get in touch with us and we can put you in touch with Skywheel Media and they will have a website up and running shortly and you will be able to find them there. All right. I have my fellow co-hosts here with me. It's the full gang again. Andrew, Cat, Matt, Lady, Gentlemen, good evening. Good evening. Hello today. So, what's going on? How are we? How's, how's everybody? Happy September. Oh, Happy it's, September. Uh, this is, I feel like the, uh, like I mentioned, September hits and just like, Fall. Now it's 90 degrees again. Yeah, it's 90 yeah right. It's, and well, aside from all the, the hot shit that's going on this week, which Matt had a great call the other day, like, how dare it get hot again? What now the that fuck, it's like, right? right? Yeah. yeah. It could be hot two weeks ago. Got to uh, do it now. Yeah, now what it's September and now it's going to be hot. It but, cooled uh, off. It was so comfortable at the beginning yeah. of the weekend. Oh, and then that yeah, Sunday, I was so like, what the fuck is going on? Now yeah. you melt. Yeah. But as I mentioned, I mean, this is, this is my favorite time of year. And uh, as, it, as it is for probably uh, a lot of you listening and a lot of us here, like the air just smells different, it tastes better. You can everything is just pumpkiny and Raggy. Halloween yes. and folly. <laughs> that and... was my ass. My <laughs> okay, cool. Pumpkin spice lattes. <laughs> Pumpkin spice lattes. Yes, cat's oh. favorite thing in the world. Nice. Nothing worse. I but... can't wait for boots. In my I like North pumpkin face. bread. Oh. Pumpkin bread's good. Like pumpkin beer, maybe some pumpkin. Actually, bread. I give like one. So at a time. Yeah, um, like one southern beer. tier, and I'm good. I'll, I'll I like say. 
I was just at the BBC and they had a Narragansett rep there with a new pumpkin beer that they released. Oh, oh really? Trash. Ooh, yummy. But it was, it was, it was, it was, it was good. Like it was trash. not bad. It was, it was light. It was like a light pumpkin beer, which I was actually kind of like, okay. Hey, I'm always a 16 on... ounce can for two bucks, then sure. Yeah. I'm always going to look out for new <laughs> Jack's Jax was like, stuff. this is not two or three bucks, but yeah. that's okay. <laughs> Cause uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm one of those people that's completely burned out from shipyard pumpkin head because it's just way too sweet. Oh, that's that's the only one yeah, yeah. Rosemary's baby. That's Rose, a good. That's, one. A, that's a really yes. good one. Yeah, there's, a, there's a few good ones out there. That they do the what do you call it, the tap handle? Yeah, a couple pumpkin, years. Pumpkin, I don't mind the. Uh, I like. I prefer like the cider donut ciders. Yeah, the yes. ciders are good. Cider I can't wait for cider. Sundays when you just sit and have some ciders and watch mm, football. Mm. I'm like, that's my favorite thing yeah it's i didn't really pick up a uh, i know andrew didn't like yeah. it and then cat yeah. didn't like it but i did pick up uh at a local package store they had a candy corn uh seltzer it's, so cider. Oh, it's very oh, 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 uh very very awful. sweet it's terrible i didn't think it was that bad but candy corn is trash yeah, yeah, I'm not I, a big candy corn like fan, candy but I, corn. I bought it for like candy corn. I do. Yes. Like oh, if I, if I, probably. If I see them, I just automatically take them. That's mm-hmm. just for takes. Are these like even take and cram? I just try people. I, that, that cider was horrendous. It was okay. awful. It All was, right. it was, well, I probably got a well, headache from taking chilled. a sip. <laughs> yeah, it was awful. It was terrible. Thanks. I thought it was I'd rather eat a, I'd rather eat a, I don't know, a pint of candy corn in a jar than I would have the, one but of you those just said that you like candy corn. Yeah, yeah, so I, I would, I would rather would never so eat it. It would, but but I would rather that than drink one of those ciders. You might as well just eat a Crayola sixty four pack of crayons. <laughs> then you get the same effect. Yeah, it's just uh, triangular. What color? Sugar candy. <laughs> like all of them. All dirt. Of them. They taste like dirt. Uh, no, it tastes sweet. It just dirt. tastes it's like, like sugar. Corn yeah, it's all like yeah. yeah. like yeah. like yeah. 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 corn syrup. It's like dirty syrup. It's corn syrup. Yeah. It's just dirty syrup. Corn syrup. Corn candy syrups. Yeah. yeah. It's literal candy little corn. cancer candy bombs. Corn syrups. Yeah. <laughs> well, I recommend that you put that in a Mountain Dew and then drink it. Mm. Oh, I love Jesus. Mountain Dew too. All right, yeah, maybe, they also say to put Robitussin in Mountain Dew and drink it. That's bad for you too. Oh, God. Jesus. Well, they do actually come out with, they come out with like spooky Mountain Dews from time to time, like a Halloween flavor. They've done it the last couple of years. Yeah. It's tough to find but you can definitely find bone it. flavored what is it? yeah bone flavored really? mountain dew <laughs> no. <laughs> no what are they I, no it's like it's bone called like broth. voodoo mountain dew bones are they like money? purple uh, the, one of the cans like was purple one. uh oh, black and can't. purple so type not thing. in the bottle Yes. I don't know if I've ever seen a bottle, but I just remember looking out for different Mountain Dew flavors. You'll probably see them somewhere. There was okay. one that was like a dark gray. It yeah. just looked like cigarette water. <laughs> Gross. Oh, Jesus. Oh, such good descriptions of all these Halloween yeah, flavors. Yeah, I like, the, I like the visual descriptions. Well, it's nice. better well, than the, remember the Harry Potter jelly beans? Oh, the ones that were trick jelly beans? Yeah, but they like, they're flavored like boogers Cute. and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Like, those, those are those those nasty. Yeah. yeah, it's a Harry Potter nerd. So like, <laughs> mm-hmm. Craig just eats those like on the job like <laughs> yeah. daily. Yeah. No, he just goes here, you won't eat one. I'm like, okay, of course not. I'm like, oh my God, this tastes <laughs> like garbage. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Have you seen some yeah. Like, ah. <laughs> like, Frank, we put those away. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's that whole like thing where you're like, oh, this is awful. Smell this. Oh, and yeah. you're like, what? Taste Why? He just thinks he thinks it's hilarious. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. It's so funny. I, he gets a kick out of himself. Yeah. It's yeah. like putting like, uh, for April Fools, I was gonna do a um, a thing of Skittles, I think, and Reese's Pieces in one bowl, and people would just take like a handful of it. It was one of my jobs. I worked like years and years ago. I was like, Why would you ever do that to anybody? Exactly. It's fucking rude. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. It's for April Fools. You just said I'm going to do that. Well, it's it's for April Fools. It's Halloween, not April Fools. No, 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 no. This was for an April Fools joke, but it was going to be put Skittles and Reese's Pieces in the same bowl. What if they're allergic to peanut butter? I mean, I didn't think that far. (laughs) I didn't think that far, but um, clearly, you're like I was just putting that on like the front desk and being like seeing if some people would take like that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. I didn't actually do it. It was apples and do chocolate covered onions. Oh God! Oh my! Yeah. (laughs) Good (laughs) luck. Wait a minute. How chocolate covered onions? No, you won't do that, Ken. Like wait, have a Halloween party and just make. Yeah, make chocolate. Caramel, yeah. Just make chocolate oh, caramel oh, onions. And then be like, oh, here we go, a, uh, a contest. Who can eat it the fastest? You can eat it so fast. And you will eat that onion. I'm, I'm you just opened a whole can of worms. You will eat the entire thing. You'll just keep eating. <laughs> You just opened. Okay, so we're going to have some sort of Halloween party. Frozen. Yeah. Yeah. We're, that, that is a whole other idea. He's going to listen to this and be like, what the fuck? No, well, I, I, nobody, I, I, nobody's going to know anything about Craig, what we're talking Craig about. Nobody knows who he is. Yeah, well, if you know Craig, you know Craig. He used to come over to my house and know my snacks. So I took a, I bought a thing <laughs> of Oreos, Oreos, and I didn't even, like, it was like four sleeves, like 
probably 15 in each sleep. And I went one sleep, two sleep. I went in the third sleep, yep. like halfway up. Because I'm like, this motherfucker eats all my Oreos. He's gonna and I just put, I took out the frosting, put mayonnaise in it. He got all the way there. He went through like 15, 30 Oreos. And he puts it in his mouth and he goes, I think this Oreo went bad. I was like, <laughs> I was like no, there's fucking mayonnaise in it. You idiot, you pig. You ate all my fucking Oreos. <laughs> He was like, oh, <laughs> and then he just went like this. He just went, you swine. <laughs> he just grabbed more Oreos. This will get rid of the taste. Like, You're a fucking asshole. Uh, That's amazing. Well, That's my, amazing that you did that. That's amazing. Uh, it's amazing like, that you knew he was going to do it and that he did do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He didn't eat all my Oreos. So. I do know each other. Oh, this is Oreos? Oreos? I'm like, well. I know you haven't eaten in three days. Have some Oreos. Feel free. Sure, you're starving. <laughs> Well, my point being is that uh, <laughs> Halloween is starting to creep back into the consciousness of the average person, not the horror-obsessed like us, and it's just Halloween starting to be out there. There's, be, there's uh, Spirit Halloween stores now open. There's one at Colony Place. We're getting spooky cereals on sale already. Saw a couple in Target last week, so there's a lot of those already out there. Halloween Horror Nights opened this past weekend on both coasts, so this haunted attraction starting to open up, and we're already getting our info dumps on all sorts of Halloween programming, like uh, AMC's Fear Fest, which is now, I believe, called Fear Fest, brought to you by Shudder or something like that. They released that lineup. <laughs> It's like seven hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, pretty well. I know. I know they're going to replay a bunch of stuff that was Shutter exclusive last Halloween. So, hundred one scariest horror movie moments is going to be on AMC this year. Uh, they're premiering the first couple episodes of the new season of Creep Show on AMC, so you'll be able to get that in uh, on AMC on TV. But the new season of Creep Show, new season of Creep Show that that'll be on Shutter exclusively, and then uh, you get to, we free forms. Thirty one nights of Halloween got released the other day. I saw that. Shutter release does their anyone, October streaming list. Do watch Freeform anymore? People that are casual Halloween fans and like that movies like Nightmare Before Christmas and The Craft and, you know, use cable. Yeah, yeah and Beetlejuice juice and that yeah. type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then even Matt, Matt shouted this out on Facebook into our group chat the other day. Peacock laying the fucking hammer. Oh, yeah, like, Peacock. I kept looking. I was like, what was Matt saying? I should have been everyone's face. Yeah. They, uh, well, they did it last year too. They had a pretty big Halloween list last year, but I think they waited till October. And now September, I mean, that thing, Fangoria does it every month on the first. Yeah. They, they release the list for every streaming service and what's coming that month. And Peacock was like two and a half full pages of fucking Huge movies. Shit. Yeah. All like the classic Monster Universal stuff. Oh, yeah. A whole bunch of other shit. Like they have a bunch of, uh, I think they have the whole Saw collection. They got like all the Friday the 13th movies went to Max, which is sick. Those are all available along with all the Nightmare on Elm Street. So you can watch yep. all of those on HBO. Yep. Yeah, no, there's a ton of fucking shit. It's an awesome time to be a horror fan right yeah. now because everything's out there. But I mean, dude, Peacock is, is owned by Universal and Comcast. And Universal has a huge horror film library. So they should have a stacked horror yeah, section they, they on Peacock. Peacock might be flexed. my least favorite streaming service, but at least they have that. You know what's funny, though, is like, I, I agree. It's not my first one to look at. No. But when I do go to it, I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, dude. I think that's the problem. I think is that yeah. we have so many preconceived notions of what we want to look at first. I go to Tubi before everything. There. Tubi's the Tubi's, first thing yeah, I look at. YouTube. Tubi is fucking. Mm-hmm. Tubi's oh, I just great. can't. I can't with the commercials. Very rarely do. I, I don't give a shit. Because it makes me like. Because then it's I like, I, then I look at my. Yeah, no, and I get so distracted. I'm like, what am I doing? Well, yeah, TikToks for twenty minutes. Fuck, I guess TikToks, fantasy football. Yeah, it's very distracting. Yeah, but uh, oh, you know what? We talked about this all the time, but dude, Netflix horror selection, horror selection sucks. Yeah, not great. Although I like a lot of them because I like the crappy horror movies. So yeah, I mean, like a lot of different different folks. I've I've actually got to say though, choose or die. Most of it's, but I got to say, like in the past, like maybe seven years. Yeah, there's at least it. there's like two horror movies a year that they put out that I'm like, well, maybe not two. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of like horror movies that come out on Netflix, and I'm like, I actually really like this movie. Usually, it's like they're weird. Like the ritual was on ritual Netflix. was a Netflix exclusive. Um, there was Apostle. I really like that. Apostle oh, yeah. Netflix exclusive. Um, yep. The like platform. There's other ones. Yeah. The um, platform. I don't think I saw that. I think they do a much better job with that. Perfection. 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 Was that a Netflix? It might have been a Netflix. Netflix Yeah. Um, I think Netflix does a very good job with horror TV because they have the partnership with Mike Flanagan. So, and that's actually, so they dropped some information in the release date for the fall of the House of Usher, his new Edgar Allan Poe Mm -hmm. horror series that's coming out this year. So, That I will definitely check out. Uh, actually, you know what? Netflix had the, I mean, they weren't my favorite, but they were pretty good with the Fear Street movies. Those were all right. Those, Those are, are cool. Yeah, not mm-hmm. bad. 
pretty hardcore for what I was actually <clears throat> yeah, expecting. They're, they're a lot of gore. Fuck. Yeah, a lot of gory stuff. Yeah, so it's a good time to be a horror fan, like I said. And um, if you're a Massachusetts-based horror fan, this coming weekend, you can attend Silver Scream Con in Danvers, which is the uh, horror convention that's run by uh, Spencer from Ice Nine Kills. Nice. Who you may hear more from at some point down the line. I'll just tease that there and leave it alone. Uh, main reason this popped up on my radar is because our friends at Spooktacular the Movie are doing a panel there this coming Saturday at 11 a.m. So the, uh, David, Tony, and Quinn, I think all will be there doing a panel, a Q&A session uh, from 11 to 12 at Silver Scream Con in Danvers. I believe it is. It's at a hotel in Danvers. I forget exactly which one, but you go to silverscreamcon.com. I can only speak. Look it up. You'll find you can find tickets, lodging, the list of people that are coming. But they have a pretty good list of celebrities: uh, Tony Todd, Skeet Ulrich, Adam Green, Chris Jericho, the wrestler, uh, Tom Savini, Tom Atkins is going to be there. All eighty-seven nice. years old of them. Pretty cool. Maybe if we uh, if golf falls through, we can go there. <laughs> yeah, there you find Tom <laughs> Atkins. Yeah, we can yeah. come into mine. Danvers and, uh, isn't that far away. It's not that it's far. Not an hour and no. an hour. Maybe yeah, that's, not even. It depends on traffic. Like yeah. Good, I mean. Yeah. yeah, potentially. Um, and then if you're, if you, uh, I mentioned that this was run by I, the guy from Ice Nine Kills, Spencer. Uh, there's also an Ice Nine Kills concert on Saturday night. Uh, I believe that's in Lynn at an auditorium, and I believe that's already sold out. But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Happy for Spooktacular. They're kind of doing, uh, they're doing this panel before they have the film debut at Fantastic Fest in a couple of weeks. So again, thrilled for them. And if uh, you're in Massachusetts and you want to attend the Silver Scream Con in Danvers, I would highly recommend that you do so. And who knows, maybe we'll be, maybe some of us will be there at one point some of this, over this weekend. Uh, what was I going to say next year? In a piece of weird news that I, uh, that I didn't necessarily see coming, uh, the Exorcist Believer has been bumped up one week uh, in release date. So instead of releasing on October 13th, it's not going to be out on October 6th. And Taylor Swift. Do you know why? Taylor Swift. Yeah, you stepped on everything, Andrew. Good job. But yes, well, I knew the answer. Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. <laughs> oh, waffles. Right now, so are they doing this because they think that they're going to lose Correct. ticket sales Correct. not because they just don't want to have like a competing number i think that they basically thought that no there's going to be way more people that go out to see the taylor swift concert movie than there are going to go see you know what happened yeah, say, those no, are no, two yeah, different no, but you know what crowds. happened is they saw what happened with oppenheimer with barbie yep 100%. yeah that's probably something yeah. to do with it i would say because obviously, I mean, obviously, Oppenheimer is a much better been, move. Yeah, well, Oppenheimer, like, Oppenheimer did movie. very well. well they could have done the but it, it Taylor Swift. Did the Taylor Swift? So the Taylor Swift, right? Fucking pilot Donald Swift, Swift. Swift. Yeah. Swift. Swift. way up in her um, bubble. Yeah, 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 but I mean, dude, Opp funny. Oppenheimer, two different movies. Barbie Oppenheimer, two very different movies, but Oppenheimer did get its dick kicked in by Barbie for the first few weeks. I mean, it's obviously still done very well for itself at the box office. Cool, it passed it in the global well, box office. Yeah, a PG-13 movie that everyone and their kid is going to go see versus a World of War II movie yeah. about two different styles. Japan. That's yeah. three hours. Yeah, that's and a three hour audience, yeah. too. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of... I'm surprised there. as many people yeah. went and saw the movie as they did. But I guess, uh, so Jason Blum, because the new Exorcist movie is coming courtesy of Blumhouse, did tweet out uh, basically announcing this week up movement for the Exorcist Believe and uh, tagged it as look what you made me do so see what you did there jason blum yeah i still don't really know how i feel about this uh about this movie uh, i mean obviously i'll check it out at some point but um there is an exorcist believer haunted house at halloween horror nights and the early feedback on it so it's actually pretty good um good little preview for the movie so good little preview for the movie good little, uh, good little uh, preview for the, uh, you know like the uh, first so can we just be fair that you need to throw out all of your last year's haunted blue blueberry cereal that's over the fridge before you purchase No, we have to new... eat that. Before. No, no, no. <laughs> it's probably so good. Is it back? It's, it's, over the, it's been there a year. It's been sealed. there. It's vacuum sealed. That shit lasts forever. It's yeah. been there since last year. It's, it's really... sugar. You can have them. My I'll eat all of them. Okay. Make some, actually, make some cereal. That's what oh, you know what? Make I, will make, I will make yeah. you cereal yeah. treats out of them. Yeah. If you really want to eat them, that's fine. The reason I can lace them with mayonnaise. Yeah, lace them with mayonnaise. Wow. Oh, they were Gross. in the old school vintage boxes, which is why I bought all of them. Uh, yeah. Well, then you should just save them. Save the boxes. Eat but the I had a, I, I had a waiting yeah, Well, once you open it, you 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 fracture the integrity. Yeah, of the box. you, you oh decrease the value. Right now. I, I, <laughs> also, I, the box breaks down because I had a Wheaties box from the 2001 Patriots Super Bowl with the Patriots mm -hmm. on it. And that box was so fun. Do you fun. keep the apart. cereal in it though? Oh, the cereal's still in you it. You got to put it in like a case. Yeah, I didn't do that. And you got to take the cereal out. I should have gotten Tom Brady to sign it. Yeah, because the cereal yeah. will go bad. The cereal's going to go bad, and that's going to... Cereal definitely will go bad, yeah. Gonna, yeah. Will go yeah. Bad. yeah. <clears throat> 
I don't even know what that is. Cool. Anyone else have anything uh, newsworthy before we move on? No, just yeah. more cereal talk. More cereal. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Why don't we pause on cereal here for a second and pay some bills? We'll be back in a little bit. And we're back. What's up? What's up? All right. Watch this stuff. I got a couple things this week. Anyone else uh, got anything they want to talk about? Or should I go first? Here? I got you some go stuff, first. but you can go first. Yeah. All right. So I watched <laughs> two things. Um, one good, one not so good. First one that I watched uh, is a movie called Horror in the High Desert, which is a found footage movie that I've been hearing a lot of things about. A lot of good things about it, I should say. Uh, there was a sequel that came out earlier this year, which is also getting very good reviews. I have not had a chance to watch the sequel yet, um, but I love found footage stuff. Uh, I thought the trailer was pretty creepy, so I decided to check it out. It's on Amazon Prime Video. I think it's also on Tubi, it so is. it's like a few different places. Um, I would recommend checking this one out. If you like found footage, it's definitely, it, it's a it's a quick movie. It's like an hour and 20, hour and 25 minutes. So it's not a huge time commitment, <laughs> but there's some genuinely creepy stuff in there. It's an interesting story basically about a, uh, a guy, uh, like a, a nature enthusiast who starts his own blog and YouTube channel and sees something out in the desert. Basically, people, you know, all, all the commenters are trolls. They think he's full of shit. They challenge him to go back out and try and film what he alleges that he saw, and he never returns. So the story basically <laughs> follows uh, one of his friends and his sister trying to locate him along with a private investigator. So it's like, you know, a do- found footage documentary interview style movie intercut with his actual footage from when he was out there in the desert. So it's pretty cool. I really liked it. I wouldn't say too much more than that, but it's horror in the high desert. Uh, check it out for sure. And then I'm, I'm going to check out the sequel to that one. I think you guys would definitely like this one. You would probably like it too. It's got a lot of like Blair Witch vibes. Outwatersy? Uh, actually, very much Outwatersy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's very similar. Slow, you know, found footage sense. in the desert. It's not quite as cosmic and weird as the Outwaters was. And I don't mean that as a detriment to the Outwaters. It's just a very much... Very much more of a, like a straightforward, traditional found footage style of filming, whereas The Outwaters is very abstract, very, you know, psychedelic, very mm-hmm. heady. You didn't really know what was going on a lot of the time. Outwaters, way scarier, for sure. A lot of creepier stuff going on, but this is definitely a very good movie. Check out Horror in the High Desert. Cool. And, uh, you know, obviously we're talking about a Ty West movie tonight. So in my uh, journey to try and complete his filmography, I checked out his 2011 film, The Innkeepers, uh, which you can also find on Tubi and I believe a couple of other places. Has anybody else seen this? Mm -hmm. Okay. What did you think? It It was okay. It was the definition of of okay. I thought it was very boring. Like I checked, I don't wear a watch, but I checked my phone a few times being like, okay, how much longer is this? There's not really a whole lot happening. It just wasn't for me. It, like, it was okay. It was it definitely okay. I thought it was cool that it was filmed in Connecticut at an actual hotel in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. It's no longer open now, but it's basically two uh, hotel workers that are staying at this particular hotel uh, for its final weekend open for the season. It has a reputation for being haunted, and they decided to try and document the haunted happenings at this hotel. Not a whole lot happens until about the last, like, maybe 20, 25 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, not my favorite. Um, I, I know I know everybody loves a lot of stuff by Ty West. This was, I think, probably my least favorite film of his that I've seen. I agree. Yeah, yeah. But you know, if you, if you like it and you haven't, if you like Ty West stuff and you haven't seen it, have you it, seen Cabin Fever Two? I have not seen Cabin <laughs> Fever Two. Um, I might have to check that out at some point. But uh, yeah, I wasn't a big fan of the Innkeepers. I know a lot of people are. If you haven't seen it and you like Ty West, check it out. So it's, it's all over the place. Again, Tubi has fucking everything. So yep. that is what I watched. Uh, the Innkeepers and Horror in the High Desert. Who's ready to go next? I'll go next. Matthew. Um, I watched, um, this is actually it, on, not on purpose that I, this is always like one of the first movies I watch as I get into September. Once September 1st hits, I'm like, it's September. Yeah, cinder block <laughs> on the gas pedal. Like, and it's uh, one of the first movies I always watch is Amityville 2, The Possession. Ah, you always you always talk about this one. Yeah. God, this movie is so much fucking better than the original. Really? It is so fucking good. It is so much scarier. I have to watch it. Uh, I have to check it, out. It's, it deals with it. It's way creepier, too. There's a lot of, like, fucked up stuff that goes on. There's a lot of domestic abuse. There's a lot of, like, incestual stuff. Um, it the gets OG, It gets pretty correct? ugly. No, the second one. Amityville 2, The Possession. I definitely remember you saying that there's a lot more, like, actual, like, really fucked up shit that happens in it. Yeah, Yeah. and um, there's a full-blown possession, and it is gnarly, dude. Like, it is a scary sequence when he becomes possessed, and as the whole thing transpires, I believe this is supposed to be the prequel to the first one. So this is supposed to kind of 
loosely be based on the DeFeos. The DeFeos. Okay. Um, All right. So that makes <laughs> sense then. That why it's called that. Yep. Okay. Did so uh, definitely watch it. This would be worth doing a uh, episode on. Okay. It is, it is a solid enough '80s horror movie. Awesome. Um, it's got a lot to it. So I watched that, and then let me double check. Uh, I watched our movie tonight. I have been watching uh, more recap of what we do in the shadows. That's been great. I've been fucking yeah. backing up with that. Nice. Okay. Uh, I do have a big one that I watched for 2023 as well. I talked about Pope's Exorcist last week. Did I talk about I Stand Alone last week? I don't believe so. It's a Gaspar Noé movie. It's his first movie. Um, I found that online, and I watched that. It's basically just like about a guy who's a butcher, and he is just a miserable prick the whole, almost all of the movies dialogue is his inner monologue just huh. kind of like i like that going fucking crazy and so uh he ends up leaving after he like beats up his wife and like he's on the run and he's trying to break yeah he's trying to break his uh his daughter out of a mental institution because she doesn't talk and that's why she's there wow. and so he breaks her out and then he uh He's a piece of shit. I, uh, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> so, um, so watch it. No, don't watch it. No, I, right. I can't. I can't in good faith recommend <clears throat> this movie to just anybody. Um, it's a really, it's a really fucked up movie. Sounds um, like it. it's harsh. <laughs> it's really harsh. There's <laughs> to the point that there's a warning with the last 25 minutes of the movie saying like you have 30 seconds to like Jesus Christ. leave before the end. You of see stuff you don't want to see. Yeah. Um, wow, it's pretty ugly. So that's how I stand alone. That's actually the precursor to irreversible. Oh, so sure, it's a fucking loosely they exist. They exist in the same universe. So if that's the prequel, to that movie, it's not the prequel, but it's, it's um, no. But I'm saying that's got to be the most one of the most fucked movies. Yeah, it's just it exists in the same universe because the beginning of the irreversible has that guy in it, and he's like discussing what he went to jail for. Oh, okay. That's yeah. Cool. So it just like takes place in that. Yeah. Yeah. Same universe. Yeah. Exactly. Fuck. So, but universe. I had I had watched that movie a long, long time ago, and I came across it, um, and I was like, you know what? Let me give this a rewatch and see. Because when I watched it before, I kind of I was a lot younger, and I just I don't think I really grasped the ground. What was yet. that on? Um, you can just Google it online. You, it's hard to find, so it's not Sounds very cool. readily yeah. available. Um, <clears throat> I did watch uh, Bo is Afraid. Yes. Oh, wait. So, don't talk too much because I really want to watch it. There's too much to talk okay, about. Okay, let's um, talk about it. I'm glad you watched it. Too, Thank right? you. Three we can hours. Move on. <laughs> so, what do you think? Streaming it, it was good. Big uh, it was wild. <laughs> like, Ari Aster has got something's fucking up with that, dude. It's like, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, it's, it's like funny. <clears throat> but it's like funny because it's just so stressful that that's the only <laughs> response you're kind of able to give. Like, <laughs> yeah, so you're just uncomfortable. Nervously laughing throughout it. But there are parts that are like funny, but it is so fucked up. Like, some of there's a lot of scenes in it that are like really, really over the top. You have a lot of overdose stuff, you have suicidal stuff, you have mass shooting stuff. It's like all over the fucking map so there's there's a lot and it also just gets totally wacko bizarro uh comically completely out of control yeah um doesn't make much sense i don't really know exactly what the reality of the story is i'll have to kind of dig into it a little bit but i'll watch i'd watch it again but it's it's a crazy fucking movie yeah um, i've heard similar things yeah it is uh, he wanted that to be his first movie debut, apparently, and I'm so happy it wasn't because people would have been like, "This guy's a fucking oh, dumbass." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a lot better that he has Hereditary and Mitsumar as his kind of groundwork, mm -hmm. and he was able to do something like this. It's like the it's the most A24 movie A24. <laughs> That's um, right yeah, there. it's yeah. It, it is out of control. But you know what? If you have the three hours, watch it and try and watch it in one sitting because my buddy watched it he split it up and he's like i wish i just watched the whole thing at once because once i came back to it i was like ah what the fuck so, yeah 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 boo is afraid, afraid yeah. yeah nice so, oh joaquin phoenix by the way is yeah how we say he's very good he's awesome he's, he's, he's very, very good and it. he's you feel so you feel so bad for the guy because he's literally afraid of fucking everything yeah um you're just why it's 
basically you're just having a three hour panic attack with this guy. That sounds like a very stressful viewing experience. Yikes. It's up yeah. there with like mother in terms of like oh, I, stressful yeah. viewing experience. Okay. So, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty much the guy who has agoraphobia and what you, what's inside his mind is what it sounds like to me. It's like yeah. not even just yeah. that. It's just everything. Yeah. Like it's, and it's like everything that can go wrong for this guy goes wrong. Yeah. So it's tough. It's just like, what about Bob, but on crack? Oh yeah. Jeez. All right. I okay. love that movie. Cool. Yeah. It's someone said, it's like, if you gave a kid with ADHD, a grocery shopping list. <laughs> And just like let them free. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so you come back with Skittles and Reese's pieces. Yeah, and put them in exactly. the same bowl and, and kill somebody. Same bowl. Yeah, and kill you don't die. It's which it, doesn't say. Yeah, unless you have severe, severe. Well, severe. yeah, peanut yeah. allergy, you'll yeah. die. Yeah, or chocolate allergy. You're like a glucose allergy. Well, peanut allergies, allergies are more common than chocolate. I'm just saying. Or Skittles I mean, allergies. Oh, so. Skittle, yeah, exactly. What if someone has Skittles? Skittles allergy. That was really hard to say. Yeah. I think you should say, what if someone's allergic to Skittles, not Skittles allergies? Yes. But speaking of Skittles allergies, Catherine, anything that you want to report on for watch list stuff? Um, I don't really watch anything besides this movie. (laughs) Okay. Are you, am I incorrect? It was a question. No, I'm, I'm, that's a question that I'm asking you. Yeah, no, um. Sometimes I want to. No, too, I'm, like, I'm all. I'm. I yeah. I don't unless I unless fried. I write it down. I never even remember. Like I just because I watch things and it's like, watch present erase. Watch present erase. Like that's like the way my mind works. Yeah. Literally, mine's like, very similar. I, I have to really like. I have to write down. Like, that's watch why things. I write down. That's why I take pictures of the. Yeah, yeah, I should just do that because I'll be like, I watched six movies in the last week. I'll be like, I don't remember one of them. Yes, <laughs> exactly. That's why I write my notes. Because if I didn't write notes and say I watched. This because I'm like, I'm always this, watching like, something, and then I'm like, I didn't watch anything. Well, that's right. why when I went back, I was like, Did I talk about I stand alone last week? I was like, Uh, I, I don't think I you stand did. Alone. Yeah, I don't think you did. <laughs> no, you never talked about that. Yeah, that's that. why I have to write down notes. I have like a watch list, like keep note, and I have this keep note for this movie or this mm. topic or whatever. So, I mean, good. I'm a very list oriented person. That's why I keep Oh, I'm I'm together. very much aware because we're married. Have lots of lists. Yes. I lists are good. Yep. Lists, lists are good. Keep you organized. So, all right. Andrew, what about you? Uh, so I rented a 2023 release, very low budget movie called Older Gods. Mm-hmm. Any idea what that is? No. No. I that. I, no. It popped up. It was like three bucks to rent. Um, very low budget. It's a Lovecraftian style movie. Nice. Um, but not worms. It's... More so, God. This guy had been friends with someone for a long time, and everyone eventually just wrote this guy off. They're like, he's insane. Like, he moved somewhere. He moved to like this cottage in Wales. And he basically just eventually they found him dead. They just assumed that he killed himself. Um, but he had just he had been he had come across this satanic cult that was basically just trying to open up a doorway for one of these gods to come through, mm-hmm. and he got accused of all these deaths that he didn't commit and then he didn't kill himself like this is, that's also given away for i'm not giving away much like that's very early on you know that but that's like the general sure. story so he goes sure. to investigate his friend's death and then shit happens shit happens nothing too out of control or wild but it's a very i i enjoyed it a lot i thought it was very well done especially like there was a lot of passion in this movie for such a low budget everyone that was involved really cared about the project they were working on you could tell that and I thought it was just, I, it was worth a watch. Hold on, I'd spend three bucks on it again, but watch it. It's tough. But there's a lot, dude. Three, three, bu- three bucks, like, there's plenty of stuff. There's plenty of movies to watch for free. So yeah. sometimes you just got to pull the trigger and just. Yeah, I was saying, I wanted to watch bucks. something new, and I was like, it's three bucks. Yeah, there's a, there's a few movies that I'm like waiting on for the price to drop a little bit because some of these movies are still like 15 bucks. Yeah, like, right. I rented hey, low for like five yeah, or six. Th- so so that's, yeah, that, that's reasonable. Yeah. I'm like, Hey, the boogeyman! Stop being fifteen dollars and drop down to like a three dollar rental on Google Play. I think like that's free. I heard enough. It's not yet bad no. reviews on that one. To kind of, uh, I'll, I'll let you do the the Stephen King completionist in me. Kind that's of fair. Feels the need to watch I, it. I hundred percent like that, that story. So I'm like, I gotta at least check it out. So I hundred percent right. understand. And sorry, that was called Old Gods. Older, older yes. gods. Okay, um, cool. And then I obviously finished. Uh, what we do in the shadows. Nice. Jeez. Yeah, we got to finish that up. It's so it. good. It's yeah. one so of the, uh, I think this might be like their best season. One of their it's best so well I feel like done. I keep saying that though every season that comes out. No. Yeah. There's something about this season. They finished strong too. I'm excited yeah. to get into the new one because I've just been, I started from one again and just yeah. like gave it, I haven't watched it in a long time. And I've been fucking cheesing yeah. Sarah likes it too. She thinks it's funny. It is funny. It's though. hilarious, honestly. I, like it's it's stupid. It's I'm, I'm not willing it's to just. It's very. It's very smart. Yes. I'm, I'm not willing to go there yet. But I, I was thinking the other day 
like it's 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 approaching like always sunny territory for me when it's on tv is is it censored when it's on tv I don't think so. I think FX, for some reason, get away with because, dude, Sunny. They just say I mean, fuck wait, yeah, they just say Hulu? fuck. Dude, Sunny says fuck. They yeah, say yeah. cunts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah, yeah, dude, they, they get, get away with everything. everything. Yeah, they're they're like wait, another year away from showing boobs. Do you watch dude. it on TV or do you watch Hulu? <laughs> I watch it on Hulu. Yeah, yeah, but Hulu, like, because I'll watch uncensored, Workaholics yeah. on Hulu and it's uncensored. And that's right. on Comedy Central, but that's censored on Comedy Central. I think on Hulu, I don't. Think I don't think no, they it's, get it. It's shit. not censored. Yeah. No. Like, does South Park say fuck on Comedy Central or no? No. It's no. Bleeped. Um, but on yeah, HBO, so it's I, unbleeped. I, I wonder, because, yeah, I have noticed that, like, they're, dude, they're dropping a lot of F bombs on what we do in the shadows this season. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, dude, man, maybe they just. Did Maybe guys, it's, it's got to be actually, it's got to have something to do with Hulu, but I wonder if they well, like Hulu they and FX. Yeah, because that can't be, yeah, they're exclusive but parts. That can't be on just cable television with that many fucks. Which is Maybe stupid. FXX. Is I haven't like watched to be yeah, there. Like, I haven't more watched exclusive really. thing. But is that available on cable? Mm-hmm. Well, if you stream it yeah. on YouTube, FXX. is that the same FXX thing? Movies. Or do you have to do the app? No, I'm very confused. You have to use yeah. The yeah, you probably have to pay for that. Do you guys? This is off topic, but did you guys know that there's new episodes of Reno 911? No, no, I did not know that. Yeah. I just, no idea. That's fucking amazing. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. I'm gonna have to go back and check that out. When did that come out? Like I don't know. Me and Sarah were a couple weeks ago. We were in the basement playing pool, and we just threw on Comedy Central. And and the like there was like an ad for like at the bottom. It was like Wednesday nights back to back new episode three hundred nine one one. We were like, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> interesting. So they just take a big like break. I have the dream. full series. Like I own the full series. So oh. I was like, fuck, now I gotta get that fucking other one. There you go. Wow. <laughs> Reno 911. Really nice That's a funny ass show. It is extremely funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the funniest TV shows probably of all time. I, I would 100% say that with confidence. It's not that bad. All right. That's a top 10. All right. Top 10. Well, top 10. That's pretty good. Yeah. Top 10 is pretty good. Yeah. Anything I else besides? Like 1990. Other than Seinfeld counts. Oh yes, yeah, Seinfeld. Slime, like, yeah, that's yeah. where no, that's Slime. where it starts. But like any like eighties or seventies show, fuck that. That's boring. <laughs> fuck old things. Well, especially <laughs> old television shows. <laughs> it's just they're not funny. Things. They're not funny because they can't be funny because it's an yeah. old television yeah. show. Yeah. Everyone's like, "Cheers" was hilarious. I'm like, "No, dude, I'd rather just go to a bar." <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather go I'd cheers rather just and smash go my to glasses on his head. Watch <gasps> Ted dancing. I have a big ass head. Yeah, he does have a huge head. Oh my god. Anything else besides what we do in the shadows? That no, it? that's it. All right, excellent. All right, we're going to talk about another movie here, as we do on this podcast. But first, why don't we take a quick 90-second break for a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. It's official. The critics' decision is in. Spooky World is spectacular. Enter the new black hole. If you dare. Or the new horror house of wax. This year, don't miss the real Jason, Bobby Pickett, or Alice Cooper. On the 24-hour Spooky World hotline. 2000. That's 508 Spooky World is just west of Boston and haunts every night from October 1st till November 1st. If you had the nerve, you'd phone 508 838 It's America's Horror Theme Park. Spooky World. Don't be scared. I'm the super sweet monster with the super sweet new cereal, Count Chocula. Here's the super sweet new cereal, Frankenberry. But I've got chocolate sweeties for monstrous chocolate flavor. Well, I've got berry flavored sweeties for monstrous strawberry flavor. Count Chocula. Frankenberry. Hi. Ah. Frankenberry. Count Chocula. Then be next door to the Abington Airlines. Barrett's Haunted Mansion. Eat, drink, and be scary. Go to bhmansion.com. And we're back. Welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. We certainly appreciate it. All right, let's talk House of the Devil, which is a 2009 horror film, as we alluded to earlier in the episode, that is written and directed by Ty West, who has kind of been... uh, strapped to a rocket ship to the moon over the last couple of years with the success of X and uh, Pearl and with Maxine upcoming, which that's coming out this year, right? Or is it next year? I don't know. I'm not sure either. Soon. I, I feel like if it was going to be out this year, it, um, 
if it's we were out this year, it's going it. to be late this year. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for that one. Um, but you know, if you're, uh, if you're in the horror movie world, you certainly had heard of Ty West before this. Uh, I first caught wind of him because he directed one of the segments of the first VHS film. No surprise there based on my tastes. Um, but I, uh, wasn't the biggest X fan, really enjoyed Pearl. I think I had Pearl as my number four film of last year, mainly because of Mia Goth's performance in it. It was an awesome movie. She was great. And uh, I kind of just been trying to, you know, like I said, polish off the uh, Ty West filmography um, before seeing Pearl. I think my favorite Ty West film, not I think I, it, my favorite Ty West film was The Sacrament, which is an awesome movie that's based on the Jonestown massacre that occurred. Mm. It's like a fictionalized version of that. That's a really good movie that I enjoy quite a bit. And I had just never seen House of the Devil before. And this is one of those movies that a lot of horror fans have this as one of the most underrated movies of the last like you know 10 or 15 years well more than 10 years because it's been out for uh came out in 2009 we're in 2023 and uh 15 years yeah so i was up between this movie and uh, a few other things that i know i broke out in the group chat that i'm sure will get covered at some point but um one thing that I saw that was interesting that kind of was my tiebreaker. Uh, it's been a huge summer. <laughs> Talk about someone on a rocket ship strapped, headed right to the fucking moon is Greta Gerwig, who uh, directed the Barbie movie, which we talked about a little bit earlier because it's uh, had such a huge success. So she directed wow. Barbie and she's in this movie uh, for a short about, amount of time. I thought you were talking about that little uh, climate change girl. No, no, it's uh, Greta Thunberg. Yeah, Greta Gerwig um, <laughs> is now directed. I think it was Thornberg. whoops. Yeah, so, Toon, I think it's, it's Liza Thornberry. Liza Thornberry. But yeah, Greta Gerwig also directed uh, Little Women, Lady Bird, which both got nominated for Best Picture. So she's definitely, yeah, she, uh, she she has arrived. And I thought it was because I knew she was an actor before she was directing movies. And I, I just never knew that she was in this. Um, so I was like, you know, there's a little tiebreaker. Let's uh, let's talk about this movie. So here we are. I, I would say that um, I liked this movie and that I loved it. And I think the thing that I liked about it and almost has pushed me toward loving it is just the overall vibe that it has, right? Mm -hmm. This is uh, an excellent tip of the cap uh, to 80s horror and 80s movies in general. It's almost like an emulation of those types of movies, which I think is the coolest thing that it has going for it in several facets. First of all, anytime you have a movie that's based on like the satanic panic craze that was out there in the 80s, which this is definitely influenced by, it says it in the little opening like teaser, uh, you have me there because I love that stuff. Uh, it's also shot in 16 millimeter film, so it very much looks like it's an 80s movie. Yeah, that was yeah. one of the things that I was like immediately like, yeah. and Mike was like, oh, no, this is a 2009 movie. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it doesn't really? look like it at all. Um, the opening titles, very cool, along with the closing credits, very much a throwback. Uh, pretty good soundtrack. Anytime you get one thing leads to another by the fix, I'm in. Pretty cool. Uh, that pizza parlor that they're in at the beginning of the movie kind of kicked my nostalgia train into high gear. So I was like, all right, I'm, I'm kind Except of... Except they didn't eat any of the fucking pizza. <laughs> right. like, it's gross. I'm like, that pizza looks delicious. Yeah, it looks good. Right. It looks pretty good. You're in Connecticut. Yeah. Eat that pizza. Oh, for sure. Um, so yeah, I liked all that. There's also a lot of horror Easter eggs for horror fans that are out there. Like D. Wallace in this movie for yep. about five minutes. <laughs> her land, her yep, land as the uh, landlady. And then uh, the family name of the, the house that um, the main character is babysitting for. Last name's Ullman. And she gets hired by somebody named Ullman to take care of a house and somebody in it. So, uh, hello, The Shining, for sure. And uh, the guy that played Mr. Ullman is in Monster Squad. He plays Frankenstein and in the Hunter. Monster Squad. Yeah, and he's uh, Dollarhide mm -hmm. in, in Manhunter. Ah. Yeah, so it's very clear that Ty, Ty West, um, you know, is, is a horror, an 80s horror fan at heart. And I really love seeing horror fans making awesome horror movies for other horror fans so thank you ty west for that do you know what wait sorry to end. he looks like that guy from i think you should leave that's on the plane oh will the... forte yeah. <laughs> a little bit that's actually not a bad a, a comparison. little bit with, with yeah. the hair with not so much but like yeah. the actual face he's yeah. kind of similar yeah I, feel like. I can see that i can see that for sure a little bit um sorry. so sorry with all that being said in <laughs> favor of this movie however I'm not so sure this is the most original movie that I've ever seen. I feel like if you've seen a Possession movie or you've seen a Haunted House movie or you've seen a Slasher movie, you know, this isn't really going to necessarily reinvent the wheel for you. There's definitely some cool stuff in it, but I think that that is kind of what's holding it back from being great to me. I wasn't necessarily surprised by a lot that happened, um, but it's a very solid movie that I enjoy. Like, I feel like I 
I feel very similar to this movie like I do about X. Like everybody loved X, Matt included. And I liked it, but I just didn't love it. It, it was good, but I wouldn't necessarily, from my tastes, call it great. So I just, yeah, that, that was my thought on it. It was enjoyable for sure, but it's not like an all-timer for me at this point in time. Now, maybe if I sit on it a little bit longer, dwell on it, maybe there'll be some more stuff that, uh, you know, I think about that kind of I will remember it more fondly for. But, you know, it's a solid, very good, but not quite great movie for me. So those are my thoughts on it. Can I just ask a general question? How does everyone feel about the way that filmmakers are making movies now that make them look like they're from another decade? Oh, I love it. I dig it. Yeah, I think it's cool, but I don't think everyone does a as good of a job as um, he does. Yeah, mm. that's not even a question. Well, because like even like, if you follows, could show this movie to someone and they would be like, when was this movie? It follows is good. It's it not- has the soundtrack of an 80s movie. It has kind of some of the stylistic shots of the 80s movie, but it's still shot as a film. Correct. It's yeah. very it's very clear it that it's same. not an 80s movie. Like this movie you could the soundtrack though for sure is fucking you could make, you movie. could have someone yeah. watch this movie and skip like the first 30 seconds when you figure out what the movie is and have them watch it and they would just probably assume it's an 80s movie. I would have they no idea. Do an yeah. extremely good job of that. Like it is oh yeah. picture perfect. Like even just like the like the each scene like the stuff in the back the style that he shoots it in done is spot on. perfect. Yeah. It's so 80s that it's not even close. Like I've never seen a movie done better in that aspect. Like it's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like some wow. even something like like Stranger Things. Obviously they're trying to emulate all the 80s stuff and 80s nostalgia, but it doesn't look like it was Yeah, all the they 80s. did was just put a bunch of fucking 80s music in it. Right. Yeah. 80s music <laughs> and That's you know, it. 80s product <laughs> they pick, costumes. They, they, yeah. they pick perfect cast, perfect everything. Like everything about this is done so well it's meticulous yeah yeah so but, like, uh, just like the yeah. cups and the silver like the stuff yeah i noticed those the, the, co- the coke cups and the yeah. pizza parlor it's, it's, yeah. it's the well. actual way that he shot the movie itself like obviously it's 60 millimeter but the drawn out kind of shots the slow zoom Very slow, yeah, everything yeah. like that the random dance girl just dancing through yeah. the hallways like for I, no reason like i exclusively like, watch so much 80s horror and i watch a lot of foreign 80s horror a lot of italian 80s horror and that is this is so perfectly on par with all of it so you can tell that he did a lot of that he watched a lot of those same movies yeah. Yeah. yeah and he just it, it's so impressive how well he nailed making this look like an 80s movie. And I think he also made X look like a 70s movie. It certainly does. Yeah. It's, it's the, he, he's so good at capturing these decades of like, and just making it that exact fucking way that they were made. So it's, it's very cool. Yeah. And it deserves a lot of credit. X looks and feels just like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Exactly. Yeah. There's, there's like two or three shots that are like, fucking identical shots that he yeah. uses too yeah um that are in the texas chance massacre yeah so yeah I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear what you guys thought of this movie so who'd like to go next i'll go go um i watched this a while ago but um i watched this when x first came out because i hadn't seen any of his other stuff so i was like i might as well watch some yeah. of his other movies yep um i think this is good it, like it, you kind of hit on a lot of good points it's nothing totally special uh, I think the best of it comes with how well he made it to look like an 80s movie and feel like an 80s movie. So there's a lot of technical aspect that I think deserves a lot of credit. Sure. Story-wise, it's nothing crazy. There's a few surprises here and there. Uh, I think that it slows down a lot. It, yeah, um, it kind of drags. It really gets slow, but I do think the last like 15 minutes mm-hmm. and the very end are a pretty solid payoff. You're like, oh boy. So. Um, and then you get a nice little end credit scene, and yeah, I, I, it's a satis- you're you're satisfied with the movie by the end of it. You're like, okay, that was worth the uh, ninety six minutes I just spent watching. Yeah, so, and again, quick yeah. movie. Yeah, go ahead. So I was gonna say to piggyback off that, um, one of my biggest things I said to Mike was like, he was he was like, how far are we in? This movie must be almost over. And I was like, nothing has happened yet. Yeah. And literally, it was like twenty four minutes, literally left in the movie. And that was when, like, all of the action oh, happened, shit. like, so fan. fast. Yeah. yeah. But it was, like, I was, like, okay, you get little glimpses of things every now and then. But, like, this is literally just, like, I'm in a bad situation. 
Well, maybe got her be head here. blown off. I'm gonna, well, that's yes, when you I, know I, that like, at least, I mean, okay, like something's something up. Bad, yeah. right. You're not the babysitter. Bam. Shit. Yeah. But it was well, very, that, even like. That was pretty quick. That was, that was pretty quick. Goodbye. But beyond that, away. it was Spoiler really, alert. <laughs> it was a slow burn. Beyond that, there was, it was just like nothing. And then there was that. And then there was nothing for like a very long time. And then all of a sudden it picked up and it ended. Like, that was kind of weird. I just, I just can't get over how well <laughs> it's shot. Like, that whole campus vibe, it, oh, it yeah. reminded me there's so much borrowed from like bro- like Black Christmas. Oh, yeah. Um, the movie yeah. Pieces, which is another 80s slasher movie that was like, that's a mess. But um, <laughs> <laughs> you get this great scene of her pulling the little tab off the flyer. That great like little like crash zoom. And then her on the pay phone and her walking away. And all you're doing is you're waiting, waiting for the phone for to, to ring. ring. Yeah, you, you know, know it's, it's going to happen. Ring. Yeah. yeah, they did that. So it's well. it's just, it's yeah. flawless. And yeah. I, I, that's, that's really is like my favorite part about this movie. And even the first time I watched it, I was like, wow, he did a fucking stellar job making this look like an 80s movie. It's oh, uncanny. Yeah. Yeah, how well it's done. If yeah. I if I met him, that'd be probably the first thing I would say to him. You fucking is nailed like you yeah. nailed how well you made. And he did. The double and he did. And, and the, the thing that I'm struggling with, I guess, the point I was trying to make is that at what point does at what point does the technical aspect of filmmaking overtake you know the story, the itself, content, right? Yeah. Because I mean, the story's not bad. Like I said, it's just not entirely it kept me it kept, it kept me interested i was absolutely yeah. interested through the whole thing but it just, I, I feel like it was happen. you know like i said it's it's not it's not groundbreaking no it just but the way that it's shot and the way that it's made to look like it came out in you know 1983 i feel like that is the closest thing to groundbreaking yeah. about this movie the soundtrack's fantastic too oh, i yeah. love that opening credit scene that you get that nice like synthy yeah. drum beat yeah, uh, yeah. It, that was italian <laughs> horror 101 oh it was good it was yeah. very good and then obviously you know it's just a i get you know the movie for most of it's just trying to build a sense of dread which i appreciate but uh but yeah i mean i don't know that's just i, I feel like i've set my piece on it but yeah it, it's definitely a well-made movie for sure what what uh what else so what, what did you think Kat? no i liked it overall i honestly like it was so funny at one point i was like reading the text message thread that we have going on and i was like Wait, are we doing House of a Thousand Corpses? And Mike's like, "What do you? What? No, House of the Devil." I was like, <laughs> "Oh, all right." And I kind of just had it in my head that I was going to be watching Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses, so I like turned it on. I was like, this "What are we? What are we watching <laughs> right now?" I was like, "That was kind of my mindset." I was like, "Oh, this is not anything that I thought it was going to be." So, um, okay, cool. Like, yeah. and I kept watching. I was like, "This is kind of I. I liked it. I mean, it was a. It was a pretty." solid like halloween scary movie in the same sense it's got like, a I good mean, got a good october feel it does yeah yeah, yeah. I feel like it fits the season nicely it's fall if winter, you if yeah. you yeah. like yeah. open all your living windows and have like a little cider and like watch that on Perhaps the tv that's like <laughs> and, like a little candle maybe pumpkin somebody spice sacrifice you underneath the full eclipse yeah yes, yes. yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> i mean maybe candy corn on deck deck, it was so funny though the entire time i was kind of like i maybe this is just me because i'm an idiot maybe allegedly but (laughs) most likely allegedly allegedly allegedly, allegedly. most likely um i i i saw like that whole flash with like the people that were already in like that circle to be sacrificed and they were dead they were over there and then like eventually she was there and i was her that scene this irked me that scene where she like sees the fingers around the door and then like she's like passing out but she passes out for like five minutes and i'm like who's th- did she eat something like i don't understand there were, there were like, drugs in the pizza that she ordered there were drugs in the pizza. okay yeah that makes sense yes because i was like how is she up there and then all of a sudden she's fine and then all of a sudden she sees his fingers and then she's yeah. like oh my god because well, like, you wonder too because her friend's like eating those weird candies off I- uh, who in the first t- off in the little bowl who yeah, the red does that thing. you're in a stranger's house supporting um, your yeah. friend like, like, no, 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 no 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 i does friend. that at people's houses okay well maybe sure but i'm like that i know is... most people would eat the candy that's what they're there no, for no, they're candy no, no, hold on. Candy. are we are we ignoring the situation here because the situation is this girl's going as moral support to make sure this person is a complete psycho and yet she's eating their candy when she has one that's like weird that she spits yeah. out and she and she has another one. Another one. Yeah. she's just they can't all be winners oh my god yeah in 
insane. Bold Absolutely move, bold insane. move Cotton for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But she's there for moral support, even though she might be dead because she had two bad candies. Like, what does it matter? Well, with her? She's Let's dead because she got a candy hold on her head. head. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she well, yeah, she well eventually, yes. Yeah, that that, 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 that happened. Yeah. 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 yeah, that was, that was like a that, that was a big old gun. That came out of nowhere. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, fuck. It's like, goddamn. Something happened. All right, so you liked it. I liked I'm it. I'm glad yes, you enjoyed I it. Did. I did enjoy it. Yes. Mr. It was, and... it was well, sorry. Sorry before you go to Mr. Andrew. Um <laughs> the end, can I just say really quick, reminded me of like Woodland Critter Christmas vibes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good right? call. Yep. I Woodland mean, Critter Christmas. Say, yeah. It reminds me. Did you see All Hallows Eve? Damien Leone. That's the, the introduction of Heart yeah. the Clown, right? I have not seen that, no. Okay, so that movie is basically an anthology of his short films. Right. And the first short film in that is very similar to the ending of this. Much more brutal, way more over the top and crazy, but it's very similar. Okay. Yeah, I got to check that out. Um, That's I've been, another I've one been meaning to, but I've heard it's like, it's like fucking hardcore. Just oh, like yeah. his other movies. Yeah. Dude, no, that movie is fucking raw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be expected with the guy that made Terrifier and Terrifier 2. So, I yeah, watch, that's I a different actor that Terrifier plays the clown, though. Really? He looks a little different. Yeah. Okay. He's like fatter. But, um, fatter? That fatter. He's a fart, fart the clown. Fart, fart yeah. the clown. <laughs> yeah. Um, that would be one that would be good to do for like an October movie for sure. Okay. But since we haven't, you guys haven't watched it. We'll put that on the back burner for sure. Yeah. That's the, yeah, that we'll one. on the front burner. Yeah, right. Uh, Andrew, what did you think of House of the Devil, my friend? Uh, I found it very enjoyable. Nice. Like we have all said. How many thumbs? Extremely well done in that method of making it look like an 80s movie. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's the, it's, yeah, see, that's the strongest point to this movie. Like, it's an interesting story. It's nothing special. But I feel like that pushes it to a different level because if you gave me the same movie done like regular 2009 style, that's a trash movie. I want to watch that movie. I have no that's interest. that's kind of my point. Yeah, no, that's I mean, my point. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like you were able to take a 2009 movie and just transport it to the 80s and make it like an 80s movie, and it's fucking so much better than any other trash. And I think they're just playing in the nostalgia, but I don't know what it is. It's just there's something about that movie that it just kept me enveloped throughout. Like I wasn't ready to put a stamp on that movie for a long time. I was like, I need to put a stamp on this movie. What's the I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> well, it's like, because you know something, stance. something's happening. Okay, you know what that how is. many thumbs? How many thumbs? It's, uh, I, I don't do thumbs. How many bums? How many farts? I'll give that like seven and a half farts. Out of is 10? that good or bad? That's good. Do you want more? The more farts, farts, the better. Okay. That's a good. That's a good movie. I, I get. I mean, that's. I, the more farts. That's the yeah. It's, it's one and a half thumbs up. I, I mean, say. one and a half. Out if we're gonna do farts, seven that's and a half. good score. It's one and a half. Out I, I give it like a three out of five stars. I, that was yeah, that was right. seven and a half. Like three out of five. <laughs> I gave I gave it a three out of five on Letterbox when I finished watching it last night. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. very well done. Interesting enough. Meh. I think I gave it the. I, I think I gave it three and a half out of five. The extra Ooh. half was solely for the for the again the eighties feeling. So. I think it was just because there was nothing that happened until 20 minutes till the end of the movie. And That's that kind of bothered me. That was really what bothered me the most. Was I was like, why am I like so, why do I care so much about this girl going into all these rooms expecting something to happen and nothing happens? Every single time she goes in a room, she's like, I go in the basement, I go in this, I go in that, I go in there. But no, she go in the basement. I go, yeah, I go there. Whatever. And like you're sitting there and you're like, oh, something's gonna happen. No, nothing happened. Something that's gonna happen this time. Nope, nothing happened. Is there someone behind the wall? I'm trying to look and see if I'm missing yeah. something here because I feel like there should be <laughs> something. Something scary should be here, happening now. And it's, it's not. not. Yeah. So like, what is really going on? That's I feel like I was looking half the time and like yeah, he holds you over the edge for like, quite a while. I'm like, what am I? Finds all like the hair in the bathtub. Yeah, yeah, that was gross. That was definitely creepy. It was weird, but yeah. And like then the picture with the vent, like there were certain little bits, but it wasn't a lot. Like I didn't have a lot of substance to this. Like there yeah. wasn't any. And then she just wakes up and she's. Yeah. And she's getting, tied to the thing. And you're like, okay. Getting plugged by yeah. the devil. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Or something. Icky, icky, icky. Yeah. I wanted more, I think. It did I catch it. me off guard. Are we in spoiler territory? Yeah, well, we're, yeah, we're yeah. all. Andrew over already place. revealed yeah. that. One of the characters gets her head blown off. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's only like, so, yeah, yeah, that's really right. spoiler. That's, that's not when she shoots like herself in the head, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. fuck, that okay. was wow. shit. And then I was like, I definitely saw more than half of her brains 
fly out of her head, and then <laughs> yeah. she's somehow alive. Yeah. What yep. the fuck? Yeah. Happened? I was like, there's well, no way. They're it both like, alive. <laughs> yeah. That's insane. Well, yeah. Her and her little baby. The Antichrist. Her and Rosemary's baby. Yeah, her and the Antichrist. Yeah, that was definitely a, that was a little gut punch of an ending that I really liked a lot. Yeah, that that's why I was like, oh, you get kind of All a right. good payoff cool. at the end. Dude, I kind of want to see, like, I feel like, like she, I would she, love to see this movie. Like, No. Movie, no, I would love to see no, a sequel no, for this movie. No, no, no. Same, like, no, 80s no, style, no. but no. With, I agree, he has no. a lot no. more, He's he's got a lot more under his belt. I feel like he could do a lot better. Because I thought Pearl was better than X. I feel like the mm. could do another maybe maybe mm-hmm. in those more. Well, even even I Pearl, think it was right? perfect to just leave it at that. But don't you yeah. think he could do a really good? Don't you think that Probably, was like his, that but he, could, he doesn't like, have to. Well, he could. Or, he could. He certainly he could. could. Like a prequel to that. So he shoot no, it like no, she's saying a like, sequel. With the baby I don't know. Coming out, mm-hmm. it's just no. off the home. Just a big no. fucking yes. No, what? but I want to see like just a deer. He sure maybe no. she's the the mother of Damien and the Omen. There you go. Well, or maybe she's a cosmic being. Yeah, maybe. Well, <laughs> it, it, maybe it's a yeah, worm, maybe. but just a big worm. Yeah, a big worm. Yeah. yeah, it would be yeah. interesting. Like he a, certainly he, worms come he, out. He, he, it right he certainly has the technical capability to be able to do it. Now, with that being said, so I mean, if you think about it, even like Pearl, Pearl feels like the fucking Wizard of Oz. It's yeah. shot that it's way. So it's well like done. it's the same thing with this movie. Like it looked like the eighties. Pearl's meant to look like it, it was filmed or shot in the nineteen twenties or thirties. Whenever. Wizard of Oz came out, right? 50s, yeah. 50s, 40s, okay. Maybe 40s, or something know, like that. Movies all the um, <laughs> now, The Innkeepers, I will say, it definitely does not take place, it, it, you know, it, that movie was out in 2011, didn't play, take place in 2011 because there was a lot of old school stuff. It wasn't quite as explicitly like a 90s or 2000s movie, but you could, there were certain things in it that you could they tell was not the same time frame. Yeah, they had cell phones, yeah. but like the the version of Windows that was on the computers was way like older, you could tell, so. Um, it came out in 1939. Wizard of Oz. It was that 39. old. Oh wow. Okay. Wow. I thought I thought it was like the thirties. It was one of the first time. Last movies. last year of, of yeah. the thirties. Wow. Um. So, but I mean, yeah, he, his attention to detail and that fashion is is impeccable. It's really really cool. Like he released this movie after it came out, like in theaters, as a promotional item for it in a clamshell VHS box with the movie on VHS, even as more of like an eighties throwback thing. So. <laughs> Speaking of which, I saw this when I was looking up. Do you guys know the last movie to be released on uh, VHS? What that was? The last movie. The last. I know what the wide, first DVD was. I don't know. Well, the first, the last wide VHS. Hey, Do we get a year? Two thousand and five. Two thousand and five. Oh, yeah. Wait. I know that I know the answer, but I forget what it Can is. I give you a hint. Oh, it's gonna be something big. David Cronenberg and Vigo Mortenstein. Oh, uh, Eastern Promises. That's nope. uh, history of violence. History of violence. Violence. violence was 2005. Yeah. Was 2007. Uh, let's see. Last major motion picture released in on VHS format was a History of Violence in 2005, according to IMDb. Yeah, that's strange. Yeah. Um, I know that the first ever DVD to get released was Twister. Okay. Yeah. I feel like we talked about that. I love Twister. Yeah. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, this, mo- this movie and also, just like The Innkeepers, Bill shot Braxton. in uh, Connecticut. So shot in New England. That's just one of my favorite movies. If Twist. I see it on, yes. I it's like Goodfellas. It's like Goodfellas. It's like certain like, Titanic. Every time, like there's certain movies I see on TV and I just I keep them on. Oh, Titanic! For, I could definitely go. I have to. Ever watch it again? Oh no, I have Titanic. to keep it on. Titanic. Sorry. Titanic. I have to be. Sorry, we're I have to be in a mood for it. I just okay. like. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Gladiator. <laughs> like, gladiator. I if I see Gladiator on, it's a love story. Gladiator. I'll watch. Yeah. She murders him now. What do you think the budget for this movie was? I just saw it, so I'm not going to Fifteen say. million dollars. Fifteen I million. Love your, I love these answers. That's a number. Really from you. <laughs> these, these are so tough to call. All right, all right, I mean, all right, I think all right. this one would probably come Wait. in at two and a half. Five hundred thousand dollars. Well, two and a half million. Uh, right. Well, Kat technically would win because she didn't go over. This was yeah. shot for a budget of nine hundred thousand dollars. Right. Oh my god, I was so close. Fifteen million. <laughs> Unlike <laughs> when you did the child's play merchandise. Five yes. billion dollars. Yes. Four billion. Like you fucking doctor evil. Uh, I was like, <laughs> yeah. done. Like, <laughs> one billion I dollars. I hit the table on her. You know who has? You know who hasn't hit the table? You. Me. Oh, oh. Everyone blames me. Do I? I, I, I blame you. Do like shit. <laughs> uh, so this movie, by the way, shot over a course of 18 days, all in Connecticut. Wow. Uh, mentioned that D. Wallace in this movie. 
She's in it for, she worked for one day for her little scene. So that makes oh, sense. She's, she's, in she's in it for, for a minute and a half. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the speculation that this movie does take place in 1983 because one thing that leads to, uh, one thing leads to another by the fix was a uh, a big song that came out that year. One thing leads to another. That's a good tune. Like that great jam. Uh, so she knocks over the vase. Like, what are you doing? She dancing on people's couches. Like, you yeah, remember the this rocking, rocking, rocking around the house? Yeah. No, no, this was essentially no. She was like. When she was dancing throughout the house, she's jumping on the oh, couch, yeah. knocks over the base. Yeah. I'm like, you're in someone's like, house. Hey, you know, always sunny. Yeah. 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 She, she, she had this sort <laughs> of like one of the funniest ones. Yeah. She had this sort of, you know, <laughs> scared attitude for a while. And then she's playing. Oh my god, I don't know what to do. And then all of a sudden, she's just yeah, just dancing around the house. So with her. here's my move. If like, I'm in a weird, if I'm in a, this is fine. She's like, if okay. I'm hanging out in a weird house that I don't know what's going on, and, and going I'm, through I wouldn't all go, of the I wouldn't rooms? go through, I would sit in one I'd room, sit in one room. room. No, exactly. wait to leave yep. and just watch TV. She puts TV on for eight seconds yep. and, and then, then turns it off. You know, and she's then watching? goes through the rest of the house. She's watching some movie. Oh. Night, of, Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. And she was watching the news and then she turned it off because Night of the Living Dead was is Yeah. Um, it was like uh, I was going to say, Ty West in that. this, is he the newscaster? No, he's he, supposedly her favorite he, teacher, and I don't remember that scene. Oh, uh, the teacher. Yep, he appears, uh, uh, Red Ty okay. West appears as a teacher. Uh, another blink and you'll miss it cameo, by the way, voice of the 911 operator, Lena Dunham. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I like her. Mm-hmm. Hey, girls. Yeah, I, don't I don't know if you can I say like that her. either. <laughs> what, that I don't like her? Yeah, I no, like her. You, you didn't yeah. say you don't like her. I uh, like there, her. There, there are a lot of people that don't like Lena Dunham, so I feel like there's probably uh, a lot I can name one person. Yeah. Lena Dunham. <laughs> well, I thought she was good. Her, perhaps, her, her. perhaps Lena Dunham's sister. Look that shit up. Anyway, uh, Google it later. I'm I can only back. imagine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good Lord, indeed. <laughs> okay. uh, let's see, what else on House of the Devil here? I want to talk about more 2009 horror. Sure. Yeah. Set, no, I don't think it's anything. Uh, I'll, hot or take, not. Hot, this year is dog shit. Okay. This year is dog shit. You heard it here first, okay? Ready, ready. Uh, this dog? I feel like is maybe a movie that only Matt may have seen. Antichrist, which is a large oh, movie, oh, movie God, with dude. Willem Dafoe. I great. own this movie. This movie's oh, fucked up, yeah. dude. Why would that you came not out in like 2009. With Willem have you? No, I haven't oh, seen it. That's done. a rough fucking one. Oh, I'm sure. I heard Lars von Trier, and I immediately knew that it was yeah. probably a fucked up movie. Um, also directed by Ty West and released in 2009, as Matt mentioned before, Cabin Fever 2, Spring Fever. Is yeah. this worth watching, Matthew? Uh, sure. <laughs> I'm surprised that, you know, given Ty West's track record, I mean, I guess it's a, it was a sequel to a pretty successful movie, so why not direct I it? I like the first to. one a lot. I like the so, first one too. I mean, it's, it's like a, it's like a stay home sick day movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're just kind of like, meh. Like yeah. You have a little yeah, fever yeah. going. Yeah. Little, yeah. Maybe a little, fever. Fever. A little flesh a little eating cabin disease. Fever. Cabin yeah. fever. Yeah, a little syphilis. Uh, let's see. What else we got? 2009 <laughs> a here. Bump. <laughs> a little crabs. A little <laughs> bump on your, on your pickle. <laughs> <laughs> love bump on your pickle that'd be a good name for a band all right we're called love bump on your pickle this song is called it itches good <laughs> butt bumps. Wow. Uh, uh, we also got in 2009 a movie called case 39 which stars renee zell wedger and bradley cooper anyone seen it no nope me neither uh we also got a remake of children of the corn in 2009 i feel like that movie's been remade 15 wasn't there one that just came out this year there's one that came out this year that i have not seen i would never see um i think it makes a good movie kind of gateway horror i this movie actually like stop motion animation Coraline came out in 2009 Coraline, yeah you've seen Coraline, Coraline, yeah yeah, Yeah. that's i feel like a a movie that you would love uh, the Descent Two came out in two thousand. I never no, saw this. I heard sequel. that's actually pretty good. It's. Eh, I mean, the, I, I hold the first one in such high regard. It's tough. It didn't need a sequel, I and it just it wasn't as good. It just it kind of like so. The Descent has two different endings. It has the main ending, which was originally intended, then the American ending, and this sequel totally disregards the original ending, which was way more fucked up. So it's take that with whatever grain of salt you want. Sure. Uh, here's a good one. Sam Raimi's Drag Me to Hell. That's a good movie. Yeah, from that was cool. I love that movie. Yep, I know. Answer. It's one of your favorites. Uh, also in 2009, we got the final destination. And the narrator said that. it was, in fact, it's not the, the final the destination. Final. Uh, but I believe that was the fifth movie in the franchise. What was six? the uh, accident that happens? I'm not sure. I don't the NASCAR think, one? I, I'm not sure which one it was. I, I actually liked like the first couple. 
Uh, we also got in 2009. I actually didn't mind this movie because I love alien horror. It's called The Fourth Kind. Anyone seen it? Uh, oh, yeah. I was very disappointed when up, I yeah. figured out, when I finally found out that, that was like not real. Yeah. Because they bring it off like. Yeah, it's, it's very like much. I think they, footage, they market like, it as a, like a real thing, but it's definitely yeah. And you know, then you're like, well, you Mila Yoke, yeah, Mila Yoke is just in this. Like, uh, yeah, I'm sure she's not like a regular person. Damn, yeah, like, definitely. It's so like an, an alien abduction kind of small <laughs> like, budget oh, horror movie. Not bad though. I actually kind of liked it. <laughs> then I saw you in another movie. Resident Evil. Yeah. Oh, that's All right. right, here's some dog shit. Friday the 13th remake in 2009. Ooh, arguably the worst remake yep. ever made. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they call it a reboot. Either way, that movie is fucking garbage. Yeah. Dude. You I, do get some good uh, good boobs, though. I believe that was the most recent Friday the 13th movie, correct? Mm-hmm. Which is, that's, dude, that's... Dude, they're, they're all, they're all tangled up in uh, copyright issues. I know. I knew that there was something like that. but And that's the whole reason that the video game was going with that they made. But, uh, dude, I, I, fucking fi- figure it out. Figure it out. How hard is it figure to make it another, 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 figure it out. Figure it out. Another I don't mind there though. just not being anymore. That's fine. Yeah. I I'm love, cool with that too. don't get me wrong, I love Friday the 13th. Yeah. All of them, well, for the most part. I mean, but, yeah, you know what? You're right though. Look what they did to Halloween. I mean, say what you will about that latest trilogy of films. They like, there was right some, on its yeah, there was some, there were yeah. some high points and a lot of low points. I mean, that Texas Chainsaw uh, legacy sequel that came out last year was hot garbage. Yeah. Good that Lord. Also stupid. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't been a, actually well, the last Nightmare on Elm Street movie was that terrible remake with uh, what's yeah what's the Jesus guy? Christ they really uh, yeah they, <laughs> well, so maybe they really yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe just leave it alone Hollywood just maybe maybe read the writing on the wall more dog shit The Grudge Part Three yikes I, I don't even person. know if there was a three I knew well, that no, there's a, a few sure Japanese a few. ones yeah. and those are all. I'm, very scary. I believe this is the third American version, which if Cat doesn't know it exists, it can't be very good because you love the grudge. I do like the grudge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 came out in 2009 and that's a, uh, a brutal movie. That first kill with uh, Octavia okay, Spencer. Spencer is yeah. very extreme. Uh, <laughs> you know what? And it sucks because it does kind of go in a very interesting direction yeah. where it is entertaining. It's super brutal, but then it goes into this weird. He definitely was like tiptoeing his way into Lords of Salem. Yeah, when he did this one, which I actually don't think Lords of Salem is that bad. You were movie. you were talking about that um, a few weeks ago. I definitely should check that movie out. That's another I've good Halloween seen, time movie seen for one. sure. It's fucking crazy. It's weird, but the last twelve minutes is just like a Ken Russell <laughs> bad acid trip sequence. Yeah. It's wild, but um. Yeah, this movie is good until it's like not, because then you're like, "What the fuck is going on?" Yeah, uh, and then it's just it's it kind of craps its own pants. I mean, but, um, say what you will about Rob Zombie movies, is that they're never dull. I would say at least he's always no. trying to do something interesting. I just think he's never made a movie that has any sort of enjoyable, redeemable person in it. Oh yeah, his, they're, they're always all just fucking miserable pieces of shit. Still haven't seen the monsters, by the way. Me neither. Heard it was not, not great. It's I, I want it's like a weird thing to watch. No, uh, it's a reboot, right? As an adult, I mean, yes. What no, the it? old show still no. yeah. yeah, but that's old. It's nostalgia. It's good. I'm going to watch a new one. That's on Peacock. Peacock. I mean. Peacock. <laughs> also, in 2009, guys, we got <laughs> The Human Centipede first sequence, oh. in which now that movie, every time I hear the name and think about the movie, I automatically think of the Human <laughs> Sent iPad episode of South Park. <laughs> it's a fucking hysterical. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that movie's fucked up. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of. All of them crazy. are fucked up. That guy, Tom Six. So. He has this movie coming out that he's trying to release that he's like not, they're not letting him release it, but it's supposed to, I forget what it's called. Um, I want to say it's like the Ophelia group or like something like that. And it's supposed to be some sort of like, like group that has sexual pleasure with watching other people's misery. Like it's, it's, it's pretty fucked up. It's kind of, it sounds Cronenberg-y. Yeah. Yeah. That but it's 26 and he yeah. did these movies so it's obviously going to be really fucking twisted but he's been trying to release this movie for like years yeah and he uh he can't just can't get no one's letting him green light it yeah so, like, and it's, sure it's, i think it's like it's like nate that must mean it's really fucked up yeah so <laughs> i'm just gonna go a little bit out of alphabetical order here because listen to these three piles of dog shit you got remakes of it's alive my Bloody Valentine, Last House of the Left, all in 2009. That Last Year House of the Left remake wasn't too bad. I didn't. Is that the one with Jennifer Lawrence? Uh, I think it 
No, yes, you're thinking no? of the house at the end of the street. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. So maybe I haven't seen the remake. I don't know last house last house. Last house. Last house, it's different because she lives. She doesn't die. Okay. And she comes home She's while they're at the house. Oh, and yeah, it's it's rough, dude. That's a rough remake. But uh, the kills yeah. are cool. He like blows the dude's head up in a microwave. Aaron oh, Paul's geez. in it. He uh, gets his hand killed in a uh, what is it? A uh, in the sink garbage garbage, 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 garbage. Oh, yeah. garbage. Yeah, what is charades? <laughs> yeah, like, you know in the sink. You know, the, the, uh, when the thing where you really the garbage, yeah. swirly thing in the sink. <laughs> you guys seen Jennifer's Body? That yeah. came out in two thousand nine with Megan Fox. I like that movie too. Not like just it. because of Megan. Well, Megan okay. Fox is obviously very that movie's called the, the Onania good. Club. This is the the um yeah production status completed. Okay, so. all right, so that's the one you were talking about. Before. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Uh, actually, not a bad monster movie that came out in two thousand nine. Pandorum. This is the one with Dennis Quaid and Ben Foster. Oh, I think that movie's extremely underrated. Yeah, it's, I it's thought that movie's underrated very good. for sure. I don't yeah, know if I've seen that one. It's kind of a horror movie. Yeah, Pandorum with Dennis Quaid and Ben Foster. Not check bad. it out. You'd like yeah, that. You should check it it's out. Good, like it's like a. I don't think I would. No, it's like. Underwater, like spacey. Like yeah, it's space. like a monster yeah. alien. You type would like thing. it. Yeah. yeah. Why wouldn't you like that? I don't know. <laughs> He's like, well, no, fuck you, monsters, fuck aliens, you and Dennis Quaid. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Dennis Quaid. Rocks. Andrew, Andrew, Andrew does love Dennis Quaid. So, Florida, that's, dude, yeah. show rocks. I know. You guys gotta watch it. What's the other one? Frequency. Frequency. Yes. That's the Dennis Quaid movie. And Jim Caviezel's in that. Jim Caviezel. Yeah. The rookie. Christ. Yeah. Christ. He's the one when he's Christ like the himself. 46 year old yeah. dad that still throws 100 miles. And it's like a based on a real guy, yeah. though. But I don't think he's a 46 year old dad. I think he's like 36. All right. So let's round out the year 2009 here. 46. We got Saw 6, Splice, which is a, Vin- a Vincenzo Natale film, Survival of the Dead, which is the sixth George A. Romero zombie movie that yeah. I did not even know existed. Not bad. Uh, and Zombieland, which is a movie that I enjoy. Zombieland's good. Yeah. It's entertaining. Yeah, certainly entertaining. I love Zombieland. Yeah, that's that's definitely a movie that you uh, you like. Yeah, it's a me, me, me. Do you, I, what, I, I like it too. Um, do you like uh, or, or remember Saw 6? No, I don't remember Saw 6. Saw 6. Saw six. <laughs> is that the one? Saw six. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that's the one. That is that one. the one that has Chester Bennington from uh, Lincoln Park in it when he's what? stuck to the car seat? Couldn't even oh, tell you. I don't know. <laughs> Couldn't even tell you. I always, I, I, I always I'm would remember back when I used to watch them all the time. I'd remember them by their opening sequence. That's I maybe watched up to five. But that was. Oh, I, a watched, long I owned all of them at one point. I, I, I one, have yeah. at least four. I saw Saw and, and then the one Spiral. I saw Saw and Spiral. And then I got rid of them. I only owned three, and then though they were all on DVD, and I gave all my horror DVDs to my brother-in-law. There's a lot of DVDs up there that I have that like I don't even remember watching because they're so old. On the book you guys case. reorganized that shelf. Mike, I Mike did. just yep. put that I did up that. there. It's all of our, yeah. So, and, and here's here's where the, because uh, this is one that I missed now, because I pulled up the box office, the hard box office for 2009. It probably didn't show up as a 2009 horror movie because it was actually created and made in 2007. <laughs> so interesting. But not released until 2009. That'd be Paranormal Activity, which is a movie that I really liked. The first the Paranormal one? Activity. The, I that saw that fine. in theaters. That yeah. movie uh, me too. definitely creeped me out. Me too. I thought it was very scared. That was the top grossing horror movie at the box office in 2009. You know what the scariest part of that dollars. fucking movie was? When she stands up in the middle of the night and she's like standing next to his bed and then you just see the time fast forward. Fast forward. Yeah. Those in the uh, <laughs> she's still so just standing fucking the scary. Those, in the, those yeah. in the demonic footprints and the baby powder that yeah. freaked me the fuck out. Yeah. Or when you just see her leg get like pulled out of the bed you're like fucking can you imagine that fucking happening yeah no i, I can't that's, throw up that's a scary ass fucking movie yeah. for sure say what you will about the sequels because they suck oh, but fuck dude, the first one's fucking oh, an yeah, awesome movie. that's why there was 15 sequels well i mean and i think that when you look at the box office sure. for horror in 2009 it definitely like so paranormal activity far far and away the most successful movie at the box office that year, like I said, over a hundred million dollars of drop off next movie at the box office number two the final destination which made 66 Followed by the Friday the Thirteenth movie, which made sixty five, uh, The Haunting in Connecticut, again another mm-hmm. exorcism like movie, Conjuring Conjuring. before the Conjuring. Yeah, yeah followed by My, Bo- My Bloody Valentine Donaldson. reboot, The Unborn, Drag Me to Hell, Rob Zombie's Halloween Two, Last House on the Left, and The Uninvited. Sounds like so, shit. Yeah, not a great year yeah. for horror in two thousand and nine. Some some good movies in there for sure, but a lot. This was the of end of the like ultra violent, gory torture porn era. Yeah, I which I'm glad to see better off. Yeah. yeah, but still, I mean, this is where we paranormal activity 
was the catalyst that shifted us into the conjuring, the conjuring and, and insidious. Yeah. Well, if I remember correctly, yeah. Paranormal Activity is a Blumhouse film and probably one of the biggest. Yeah, it's produced by Jason Blum. Probably yeah. one of the most successful Blumhouse horror movies that's ever yeah, come out. Sinister, right? Because that movie, uh, Paranormal Activity, was made for fifteen thousand dollars and uh, grossed almost two hundred million dollars globally to date. Damn. So, so let's uh, just remember that if that movie didn't happen, we wouldn't have all these shit Blumhouse movies. Now. Yeah, you also have that to think. But also Blumhouse, like I said, you know, Blumhouse brought us Get Out. I believe it was a, yeah, a bunch, bunch of stuff. Come. <laughs> I love your little alternative titles for things. Come House, Slime Field, <laughs> Slime Field always gets me every time. I don't know why. It's so Sharks and Gargles. Sharks and Gargles was a good one that we don't use nearly enough. It just it just happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's that like, that, I just, the fence gate is open. All it the is time. just Sharks and Gargles. Sharks so. and for Sharks and Gargles. Well, anyone have anything else they want to throw in about uh, House the Devil for Sharts and Gargles before we uh, put a bow on this bitch? Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of like rating movies like on the fart system. Like yes. that was forced. Yes. Yeah. No, that wasn't forced. That came out all natural, like all my farts. Uh, 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 right out. See what you did there. Yep. Cool. Anyone got anything else? Well, we see done. Ya. <laughs> Kat's, Kat's been ready to be done forever here. Great. Good stuff, Catherine. Hey, at least it's a short week. Yeah, right? it's a short week. I, I know. know. It's, yeah, it's, uh, nice. yeah, it it's definitely as but good as the short week. It's a short week, but it's still the same day. But we are, same day. we are fucking different to that make. Very like it's excited Tuesday. for spooky season. <laughs> Yeah, it's September. Do you it's remember? <laughs> oh, and God. I'm super excited for fall and pumpkin spice Can't lattes football. and football. Yeah. Football. Nice. yeah. Ooh, yeah. that go. was nice. Very nice. Good little tune. That was very nice. <laughs> Excellent. It's like Earth, Wind, and Fire themselves are right here. I am excited for football. Me and Sarah's one year anniversary is. Uh, Yes, Sunday. soon. Oh, oh shit. Oh, yeah. no, I don't know how much football I'm oh, watching. No. Oh, that's okay. Oh, well, hey, it's so, okay. Your yeah, we'll at least watch the basket. Your anniversary, anniversary, anniversary comes but once a year, my friend, so make it count, my yep. friend. All right, cool. Well, I think that's going to do it for another episode of America's Hometown Horror. Thanks for tuning in and listening to us rant and rave about House of the Devil. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, just so you know, we'll be back wherever you're listening to us right now next week. But we're also on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and wherever else you get your podcasts. Feel free to leave us a review. We would certainly appreciate it, preferably five stars. But that's what I got for tonight. So, Andrew, Cat, Matt, Lady, Gentlemen, say good evening, goodbye, and salutations to your listeners and audience. Good evening, good goodbye, evening, goodbye and, and salutations to my audience. <laughs> good evening. Good. That was actually pretty good. There we go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>